Our health is the most important thing that we have. And as a married woman of almost 19 years to my dear husband, Andrew, and mother of two boys and daughter of my dad, Bill, who's 81, I am acutely aware of the fact that men don't go into the doctor and they don't seek care. In fact, I have an uncle that saw the doctor once in his entire life and died at age 86 of a heart attack while he was climbing a mountain. Men typically have a hard time going into the doctor. And this podcast is for all of you women that care about the men in your life, whether that's your sons, your dads, your husbands, your brothers, your spouse, your partner. We are covering everything with Dr. Bronbot, a urologist at Orlando Health. We're covering everything from steroid use to infertility to depression to prostate exams uh, to identifying any kidney problems and what's the best way to see a physician. We are covering the gamut. Dr. B is incredibly approachable, relatable. He makes things funny. And the reason I had this podcast was for all of you ladies that are the caregivers of the men that we love. And it's good to recognize the symptoms and it's good to be encouraging to our men that we love. With that, let's get into the interview today. You're going to learn lots, take some notes. I'm going to have all the show notes with the links of the products that he recommends and uh, as well as a link to follow um, Dr. B on LinkedIn and TikTok. And I just hope that you leave with some new ideas on how to incorporate health and wellness into the men of your life, into their lives. So with that, let's get into the episode. So two things that I wanted to ask about. One was UTIs. That was really interesting on our last interview when you talked about UTIs and then supplements to prevent UTIs as well as um, recognizing any kidney dysfunction. And then the last thing I wanted to chat about was really prostate health and just like some tips for wives to maybe suggest or, or just to know about, educate us on prostate health. So, so the first you, thing with UTIs. Okay. So we'll, I'll give you pretty much a TikTok one minute version on all these things. So urinary tract infections, your man should not be getting a urinary tract infection. Uh, when men are younger, symptoms of urinary tract infections are usually sexually transmitted diseases. But you, if you're in a very strong relationship, it doesn't mean he has a sexually transmitted disease. Um, but if they are having symptoms of urinary tract infection, whether it's burning when they pee, blood in the urine, uh, abdominal or bladder pain, or fevers, chills, you got to get yourself checked out because a dude, again, should not be having symptoms of urinary tract infections. The reason women uh, regardless of age or more prone to it is because your urethras are much shorter. So the bugs from the outside world can get in much quicker, especially if you're postmenopausal. Uh, postmenopausal, that kind of first line army, uh, that's your estrogen and the acidity to that area is kind of starts decaying. And that's what makes you more prone to infection. Men have the same length urethra, uh, and it's longer than the female urethra and the bugs should not be getting in. Usually the bugs are coming from something on the inside. So when a guy has a urinary tract infection, you know, we do a workup. So is it a kidney stone? Is it some blockage in his urethra? Does he have scarring there? Is he not peeing? Or does he have prostatitis or just chronic inflammation? So there is a very extensive uh, workup that is done to kind of sort through these things because we don't want, you know, to him to be getting infections again. But the way you would know he has an infection is the symptoms that I mentioned is a rapid change in urinary symptoms. Uh, plus or minus, you know, whole body symptoms as well. Really? Whole body symptoms of? Um, Fevers, chills, fever. fatigue. Okay. Now, if he's partied at a bachelor party the weekend before and Monday morning, it, you know, he's having burning when he pees, it's probably because he's dehydrated. And if he feels like crap, it's probably because he hasn't slept. So, you know, it, it can't be like a one-off thing. It, it's like, you would know. It's like he's been normal, hasn't done anything crazy, and then boom. So that's, Infections. Infections in men are treated pretty much the same way in women initially with antibiotics. And then we would kind of take a deep dive in what the cause of these infections is. Now, one really quick thing about urinary tract infections for either gender uh, is 
when you get the test done for urinary tract infections, it's usually like in the office, it's like a dipstick where we quickly just drop something in. Um, and, uh, once it's dropped in, then it quickly gets analyzed by a computer or whatnot. That's not the best way to check for infection. I mean, you have some markers and triggers, but that's not the best way. The best way to check for infections really is a culture where you actually, um, have your entire, um, urine kind of set up and cultured and where they like to take a deep dive and take a look at things. So that, that usually is the best way to, you know, check for urinary tract infection. So, you know, I have all these people that come in and say, oh, I got checked, blah, 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 my doctor's office. Um, and I got an infection. I'm like, how do they check for it? And it's usually not checked the right way. Mm, interesting. So if we have uh, a UTI test, that's like the first line of defense to say, hey, it's positive when you're at home. It's really a screening then. Because if you are positive, you should really go into your physician to get a full um, culture. Yeah, whether it's your physician or whether it's um, your, you know, local urgent care center. I mean, you could walk into like a a grocery store, or you could walk into like you know one of those corner um, uh, pharmacies, and you know you can get a test done there. I mean, there's there's actually at home tests too, but those are not as you know accurate. But you know, there's definitely different ways to go and get yourself uh, checked out. So that's urinary tract infection in a nutshell. Do it, should not be getting it. If they do, get them treated and then get them evaluated. And usually that will lead down the path of seeing a urologist. Okay. And that is what you are. That's what I am. A human And plumber. what about the uh, supplements of like a D-Mano supplement? Uh, does that do any good? So I actually am a huge believer in natural remedies uh, and supplements for um many diseases, but I would have to see the data on it first. The only uh, supplement that I actually started giving out before like the guidelines really promoted it was cranberry. Now, it, this isn't cranberry juice. This is not cranberry and vodka drinks. This is actually a cranberry supplement. There are tons of cranberry supplements out there. Uh, I think a majority of them do work, but you got it. When you get a supplement, the best thing is to look for like certain certifications. Now, supplements are not regulated by the FDA. So sometimes you don't know what's in them, where they're coming from. Um, so I really promote like go, uh, and either see where your doctor's recommending, but make sure they're not making a profit off of it. Cause you know, sometimes things can be biased, but, uh, you know, cranberry supplements, most of them are pretty generic. I think they're fine. And I think they work now. Should you just take it proactively? No, uh, only take it if you're having a problem, like don't put something in your body if you don't need it. Um, so this is not one that I recommend taking proactively, but no, absolutely for recurrent urinary tract infections, I think supplements work great, but you know, works, works better. Mm-hmm. It's just drinking water and staying hydrated. Yeah, that's right. the I got so oh, I got burning, burning, burning. I'm, I'm like, how many water did you drink today? Two glasses and a beer. And uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, I went running outside at the beach in an and energy it, drink. I'm like, just, right? just drink. Can you just drink water, please? <laughs> right. uh, what about power? Can I can I have Gatorade? No, that has salt in it. You know, like, just water. Just drink water. That's going to help a lot of your burning symptoms. So, and honestly, like. I used to say this, but I actually didn't believe it until I had a kidney stone. And Ah. if you've ever had a kidney stone, if you ever had a stent inside of you, it sucks. (laughs) Um, And I always tell patients, oh, the stent doesn't hurt. Like, just just drink water. It'll be fine. (laughs) And uh, I realized, like, I should follow my own advice. It hurts so much. It hurts everywhere down there. And But when you drink water, it does help because it lubricates your bladder, keeps the, the clots away. So it's the same principle. It's like the more hydrated you are, not only going to feel, feel energetic, your skin's going to look better, you're going to glow, um, but it does help um, keep your urine concentrated and avoids the symptoms and also avoids um, infections and kidney stones. So so supplements, Excellent. sure, but hydration, H to the Izzo. And if they're supplements, checkable wellness supplements are UTI Prevent, is D-Manos, and hibiscus flower and cranberry extract. So all three and made in the USA. So we're very proud of that. Uh, so I, I love how you're plugging in your uh, your product here. So thank you. Uh, kudos to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great supplement. It's our number one seller, actually. Uh, so from the side of prostate health, uh, we don't hear about it as much as women get your mammogram 
and now it's down to age 40, uh, of men, go get your prostate checked. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. yeah um, men, you don't really need to go see a doctor, get your prostate checked. Yes, you will eventually get one. But you know, if, 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 if all men felt that way, no one's going to go see a doctor because, oh, dude, I'm going to go see a doctor. He's going to put his finger up my what? <laughs> right. Um, so I usually, when I see a guy that's like really nervous, hesitant, the first thing I say to them is, listen, relax. I'm probably not going to need to check your prostate so you can relax. And then their sphincter tone just relaxes. Like, <laughs> uh, you see them like relaxing in the chair. But when it comes to prostate health, um, the things that women should look out for is changes in urination. Um, you're going from waking up zero to one to three at night. You see them taking longer to come back, you know, when they're going on a break during a football game or basketball game. Um, you see them having to push or strain. You see your dude like always standing to pee and now he's sitting to pee because he's like having to really force it out. Um, so there's lots of symptoms, but usually it's something called nocturia where you guys are waking up at night. There's frequency, there's urgency, there's a weak stream. There may be some dribbling afterwards. So there's like this, these things. And what we do when see, we, when we see these patients in the office, they fill out a survey. So we get like a objective measure and then we kind of from there follow it. Um, what's one, what's really interesting on these surveys is the last question is always about quality of life. You know, you may have all these symptoms, but if it ain't bothering you and we do our regular check, you know, there's no point in kind of pushing forward towards something. Um, but you know, there, there'll be people with like minor symptoms and their quality of life is, uh, is really, really bothered. Like they can't work, they can't go anywhere. So then we have to get a little bit more aggressive, but when it comes to your guy, he will eventually get a prostate check. The prostate check is part of um, a screening protocol for um, for prostate cancer. So prostate cancer screening, depending on your family history, could start at 40, could start at 50. Um, you have to kind of talk to your primary care doctor about when you should start based on your family history and other things. Um, so it's a lab test that you get once a year, um, and you get it once a year because that's what insurance covers, unless you have another indication, but that's that's it once a year. And then you'll get a prostate exam either now or in the future, um, you know, I do it maybe once and then I'll do it if there's an issue or suspicion. But really the lab tests and everything else have gone so good that, you know, the the, the need for that has gone down. So guys, don't be scared. Like, you know, that's not the first thing you're going to get. But um, when it comes to your prostate, there's actually some really cool things you can do proactively to avoid having prostate issues. Um, those include having a normal weight, uh, a good diet, um, exercise. There's been studies done, longitudinal studies, that people that lived in countries that had a very healthy diets, and then they moved to America, and they pretty much went from no prostate symptoms to not major prostate symptoms. So there is something within that prostate gland that can be affected by diet. But um, when you have issues, yes, there's medications and there's surgeries, but just like I mentioned cranberry for recurrent urinary tract infections, for your prostate there's actually some really cool supplements out there. Now, if you're buying a supplement that you saw on an infomercial at 1 a.m. at night and there's a celebrity promoting it and you got to sign up for a three-month plan, it's probably a for-profit gimmick. Uh, most of these prostate supplements have a combination of things, but usually the main ingredient is sal palmetto. Um, the issue with sal palmetto is, again, it's not regulated here, so you don't know exactly what you're getting. Most of what we get here is like the powder extract. Um, the powder extract, you just don't know what the quality is. I'm a big fan of, um, a company called Flamentum. So they actually are, it's made right here in my backyard in Florida and it's a prostate supplement, um, that's liquid extract. So in Europe, oh. there were studies done looking at the powder versus liquid extract. Um, the liquid extract has been clinically proven to be very strong towards relaxing your prostate, decreasing inflammation. In Europe, it's actually, a, you need a prescription. You need someone like me to give it to you. Whereas here in the States, it's actually a supplement. So you can buy it on your own. So that is where you can be proactive. Like, hey, you want to do something beyond your vitamins? You, you can take a prostate supplement, no problem. I'm not recommending this in your 20s, but hey, let's say you're getting in your 40s um, and you want to do something that you can proactively actually do it. I, in my office, um, used to just, just watch these patients. But if they want to do something, I do something called active like management. So like, like, um, I, it's not really a bother, but I'm actively doing something for this that could become a problem. And prostate health is one of those things that I do with supplements in my office. 
That is so smart. That's that's actually promotes good health for my guy. Like, mm-hmm. okay, you can monitor it. It's because a lot of times, oh, I can't even tell. There's no effect, but they want to see. Oh, what's what's putting in my body helping me? Mm-hmm. And so you can help manage that. Yeah, and the cool thing about prostate supplements is most of the prostate medications do have some sexual side effects. Um, whether it's loss of libido or retrograde ejaculation, whereas supplements really don't have that side effect. They may not be as good as medications, but hey, I think I think I think it's worth a try. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm a I've become a big advocate uh, since I've seen the benefits of um, you know recommending something like Flamentum um, to our to our patients. So it's pretty cool. I'm a big fan. I'm gonna link that to my. Uh, I'm gonna find them. Thank you. That's a good. That's a very good tip. Um, so the last thing that I wanted to ask you about was if the unrecognized, undiagnosed symptoms of depression in men and what you see from a MD side and how to recognize that and suggest uh, to do something about it. Mm-hmm. So you you did have a third question about kidneys, kidney damage, kidney oh, failure. Oh, yeah, I do. I just wanted you to- um, so good. Let's talk about kidneys quick. I thought you-, so you This did. is going to be very quick. I know I'm, I'm taking yeah. too long here, but really quickly, um, for kidneys, there's actually two specialties that manage it. I'm the surgeon of the kidneys. If you have a tumor in there, stones, and there's actually a medical subspecialty called nephrology, and they manage like the medical part of kidneys. So you work as a team. The best way to kind of screen your kidneys- for like the big stuff is get a lab test uh, where they actually check something called your creatinine and GFR. And they can actually see how well the horsepower of the kidneys is working. For other things for your kidneys, like whether it's a stone or a tumor, that all just kind of depends on what symptoms you have and whether you have imaging ordered, like whether it's a CAT scan, MRI, ultrasound. So a lot of these things get discovered incidentally in my line of work or emergently in the emergency room where all of a sudden you're having some issue, you get a CAT scan, you find a stone, and then boom, you're in the operating room. Um, So proactively, to really protect that kidney, whether it's from stones um, or medical disease, uh, is really just protect your heart, really. Um, And again, it's so boring, like exercise, diet, (laughs) avoid salt. Uh, But it really is that easy. Um, yeah. so that, that's, that's kidneys in general. So you asked a question about depression in men. Oh, quick oh, question oh, though about oh. creatine. What if you do have a look, what if your are your measures low? Are they high? You said creatine and what was so the creatinine, other? Creatinine and glomerular filtration rate. So creatinine, your creatinine. numbers should be low. Okay. Um, and it's, they check other things, BUN, creatinine and other things, but your creatinine, your numbers should be low. If it starts going up, that means your kidneys are having some issues or even failing. Oh, the got confusing it. thing okay. is the better gauge of how what your kidneys are uh, and the horsepower within them and the juice within them is actually the glomerular filtration rate because that takes into account multiple things from about that patient. Um, it even takes into account race uh, in certain cases. So that number is actually really? the opposite. So you should be really high, like. I yeah. mean, close to 80, 100. If that okay. starts going down, then your kidneys are having a problem. And I think if it's like, if it goes down to 15 or 20, that's when you're on the verge of dialysis. Where you got to sit on a oh. machine uh, several times a week to basically do what your kidneys do for you naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, it's all in the semantics of the lap test. Got it. Okay. I didn't mean to interrupt your, you right there. That's okay. But it was good explanation. Thank you. Now on to the depression question. I'm glad you're not going to use the video because I know it's cutting off here as I drink my Celsius here. <laughs> Celsius, sponsor us. Uh, I, I do uh, love Celsius myself, except I think I, I drank it on an empty stomach when I went to a yoga sculpt class the other mm-hmm. day at 530 in the morning and I thought I was going to pass out because my heart rate got so high and it was you know, like what, 106 degrees. I don't know if you know this, but like when you drink these these drinks where they say zero, zero calorie and good for you and all, all these things, you know, they taste great. But one thing you got to make note of is these things may taste great, but they can be very salty. So when you look at mm. salt, it's not going to say salt on here. It's going to be sodium. Mm-hmm. So this one actually has zero milligrams, which is pretty interesting. 
Um, but maybe it's all in their proprietary gl- blend. But mm-hmm. you got to be very careful about that. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm eating healthy. I don't add any salt to my diet. Yeah. But then they're either drinking things or eating things out of a bag that have a lot of sodium mm-hmm. to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can cause blood pressure, kidney stones, et cetera. So, you know, just be very careful what, you know, I think Celsius overall has a very good balance on everything. Um, but a lot of these energy drinks do not. Yeah. Like the monsters with, or it's a bang with creatine. Well, bang, bang is really popular in, on TikTok. I mean, they, uh-huh. they pay all these influencers to drink it. Um, I think, I think bang tastes pretty good, but if you like yeah. read it, it's like, I can't even pronounce half the stuff. And I'm like, people are drinking this. <laughs> right. You know, what people don't realize is like, and you know, I used to be addicted to Diet Coke and okay. Red Bull. Like, yeah, just be honest with you as we go into our conversation about mental health. Mm-hmm. Like I used to drink like three to four Diet Cokes a day. Yeah. Um, wow. And diet, I'm like, oh, it's diet. Mm-hmm. You know, but then you read the sodium and everything else. Um, you know, there's actually studies that show that, and that's why the, all these companies came out with like these new versions of sodas, like mm-hmm. Coke Zero and then Pepsi yeah. Max. Or, so, you know, all these artificial sweeteners, we may think like, oh yeah, they're good for us, blah, blah. But these artificial sweeteners can actually change like your appetite levels. But also it's been shown that they may not raise your sugars, but they can kind of alter, and I don't want to sound like an expert because I'm not an expert in this, but they can change the way your insulin metabolizes certain things where you can oh. get, um, it's not really high sugars and diabetes, but you can get like subtle uh, remnants of that where, you know, this may be triggering some bad things that may happen in the future. So you got to be careful, everything in moderation. But I used to drink a lot of this stuff. But then I started going on my fitness kick and switched to water. And now I'm down to like, one, maybe one and a half. Yeah. Uh, so I still drink it. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm super healthy, whether it's a Diet Coke or something like this. Um, but I do it in moderation. So, and what I was trying to get at is I got dudes coming in for low testosterone all the time. The reality is their body has become so, is it tolerant or intolerant where they're drinking so much bang and um, oh, all these monster drinks. Yeah. So your body's used to like, constant amount of caffeine and taurine and all these things are supposed to like energize you but then you need more and more and more and more and more so of course you're crashing you know at night after your seventh thing or of course that the next morning you feel like crap because you're not gonna get anywhere until you didn't drink two or three of these so um that's one of the hardest conversations like hey you don't really need testosterone um you don't even need to lose weight you just got to get off your caffeine kick uh, cause it's hard. Cause I think, you know, people do get kind of addicted to some of these things, but, um, I think you gotta be careful with how much of this stuff you're putting in. Yeah. Um, so I don't even know what your question was. What was your question about depression? I'm depressed. Yeah. I forgot your question. So no, I, I think depression in men, last time we talked to you had said that it goes undiagnosed and that there's a large percent of men that are depressed and things that we can look for. And really, what's the best? I I feel like I know you're going to say diet and exercise because doesn't it help with everything? But <laughs> yeah, but in this case, I think it's more um, a mental connection. So it's about communication. Yeah. You know, dudes really try to treat themselves um, with alcohol or partying or like you know just sitting by themselves and like keeping everything in. Um, you know, mental wellness is, I mean, is, is key. You know, we all look at our physical bodies. We forget our mental bodies. Like I personally have engaged in some of these things to kind of help my mental wellness. And I actually sometimes open up to patients about my own struggles. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Because I, because they come in and they want all these things. And, you know, after like maybe the second or third visit, I'm like, listen, bro. So I put the laptop away. I mean, I'm usually not talk on the laptop, but I look at them and I listen, bro. I've been through A, B, and C, or listen, yeah. I've had this surgery yep. and blah, 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 blah. This is what you should do. Like, or, you know, it's not perfect, but mental wellness is, um, is tough. Uh, depression, anxiety. Um, uh, a lot of people are suffering with this stuff and then they go to all these mm-hmm. other addictive behaviors. Depression is, it's, it's easy to screen, but it's also hard to screen. And, for you, I don't, I'm not an expert at it, but 
you know, I've gotten so good at it because I see these men, like I just know what they have some mental illness, not low testosterone or anything else. Um, but to have that conversation is still very difficult for me. Yeah. I think the best is way to it? prevent. For you, it's hard to have with your patients. Yeah, because they, they, they come in thinking they're going to get testosterone or something yeah. else, or I'm going to like, you know, solve the world. You know, even when they come in for erectile dysfunction, like, oh, I can't get it up. You know, I, I do try to segue into some way about figuring out their relationship status is like, how long have you been with your wife? Blah, blah, blah. Like, what's going on? Like, is it just with her? Is it not with your girlfriend? Like, you know, we get into these deep conversations and then they usually open up like, yeah, you know, she's at menopause and it hurts her. Um, so I'm like, the issue is not really your ability, your ability to have erections. It's more, you know, you have concern for your partner. Okay, so let's talk about how we can help her. So these are the things I know. We have some uh, doctors here in town that can help her with that problem. And let's work on it together. Yeah. Um, but then it's also like they hate each other, mm-hmm. you know, because mm. the dude's expecting, you know, what he sees on you porn or X hamster yeah. and that kind of stuff at the age of 80. <laughs> uh, so you have to have like a re- realistic conversation with them is like, listen, you got to calm down um, and, and not be so macho about some of these things. Let's let's look at this as uh, on both sides. And honestly, a lot of the time people are addicted to porn or, oh, or, or wow. they become desensitized to intimate, in, like personal intimacy, one-on-one touch. Um, because you know, when they watch porn, they can look up whatever they want. Uh, and you know, it's like one and done quick, let's go. Right. Whereas the other way you got to buy some flowers and you got to like do, <laughs> you know, foreplay and you got to do all these other things. So, um, it's a lot, it's sometimes a lot of work. Um, but, uh, I always tell them like, listen, you got to stop watching that stuff because that's not reality. Yeah. So, you know, all these things coming together, I think, I think, I think it all is also part of that mental part is because we can become addicted to certain things or we kind of Mm -hmm. go to other avenues to kind of just get away from our reality. Yeah. And what I've learned over the past year, two years is you just got to face your reality. It's hard, but you got, mm-hmm. as a guy, you got to face your reality. Like this is what's wrong and the wrong is in me. Mm-hmm. Or if the wrong is in someone else, what can you adjust or change? Or how can you just get rid of that person in your life? Like, so that, you know, you kind of stay on track. I think men, whether they like to admit it or not, are actually very influenced by their sur- social circles. Like, you know, we see all mm-hmm. these videos of oh, little girls, like, you know, Justin Bieber and all these mm-hmm. things. Um, but I think men are even more influenced. Um, by social factors, but they're just not, you know, up, you know, open about it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they have an ego that tells them can't admit that. Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you talking to me personally, or no? I'm, I have two. <laughs> I have two teenage boys, and I realize one of them is more influenced than the other. Oh, really? Okay. By like impressionable, and I, mm-hmm. like today, this morning, I said. He skipped a class yesterday. He said, oh, well, my friends were going to Starbucks and and driving around. It was a nice day. So I skipped ceramics. I'm like, <laughs> you said that you weren't going to skip any classes. And then you skipped. Yeah, but so mom, you- it's ceramics. Like who puts their kid in ceramic class? Like My oldest, Will, is it's his best class. He is a beautiful. I'm going to send you some pictures. And and Will's a stud. Like, Will's my guy that wanted to take so steroids. He, like he, he can th- bench 250 and- he is really good at throwing on the wheel. Yeah, but maybe he wants to do steroids, but not ceramics, but you're forcing him to do one or the other. So. <laughs> no, all, all jokes aside, I think I think, I think think it's good to be like, you know, engaged like that. Yeah. Um, I think guys, you know, I don't want to say ceramics is feminine. That is not the case. Mm-hmm. But I think guys should be more accepting of kind of doing whatever they want, you know, all because you like something doesn't make you a certain way or give you a certain title. Um, you know, I was, you know, I wear pink shirts all the time. Like people mm-hmm. used to make fun of me, like in high school, like it, it's, it's like, but I've always You're a embraced, Jersey boy in a pink yeah, shirt. You know, I've always <laughs> embraced my true self. Um, and I think more, more guys should do that. Like just mm-hmm. be you, mm-hmm. be you. That's where I went to college, Boston university. Oh, you did. I was just in Boston last week. Oh, really? Yes. I went okay. to a clinical research conference and the American telemedicine conference. We stayed in Back Bay, and we went to this place called Select Oysters. If you haven't uh-huh. been there, next time you go, you should go. It was amazing. Well, um, everyone in uh, 
Boston goes to, oh man, what is it, man? I was just there for my, I mean, I, I don't eat meat. I'm vegetarian, but they go to, uh, man, what is it called? Now you're going to kill me. There's tons of them. Very popular place. But yeah, it's, it's a, it's a lobster place, but no, Boston's awesome. I think it, it's very, very cool and educational to be there. But, uh, mental wellness is key in dudes. Like I think, I think it's even more important to engage your dude about his mental wellness than his physical wellness. Yeah. Cause if he's mentally strong and you guys are on the same wavelength, uh, it's gonna be much easier to get the, all the other stuff done physically. So and I good. would say utilize your intimacy and what you do in the bedroom as kind of like a way to inspire the mm. other stuff that you want. Um, and I wouldn't do it by force, but you know, there's definitely strategic ways like, Hey, mm -hmm. if you go to this, then I'll be home. Even if you're two hours late uh, yeah. from your doctor's appointment, but really quickly, uh, some, some quick things to make doctor's office visits easy for him. Like try to get the first appointment block. So whether it's the first mm -hmm. appointment in the morning or the afternoon clinic, then usually things are going to run on time. Okay. The second thing is if there's any medical records, like just start compiling them. Uh, there's some apps that do it, but they suck. But like any, any history that you may have, like, you know, mm. just do it. Now there's mm -hmm. going to be paperwork from the doctor's office. But what I tell my patients is just create a personal uh, thing that only you have access to on Excel or, or Word and just have a running thing. So like the Smart. dude can just go, how many times do I see a dude that gets an appointment by a wife like you, Patty? Yeah. And he has no clue why he's there. I don't know. <laughs> You know, oh no. Um, so, so give him a list, like, you know, like give him a list, like, yep. so early appointment, give him a list. Um, and, it, and the third thing is, uh, usually now most people have portals, so you can have access to that portal and you can actually see what was discussed or what orders yeah. were put in. Um, and so then, then you have kind of the back now, you're not snooping or anything. Obviously, you would get his permission, I'm sure they're gonna be fine, but if you have that then you're kind of like engaged. Um, you know, sometimes I feel like it's how we like engage my, my kids in school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we, have, we know certain things, but we give them an independence. But the thing is, once, once you get started on this track, you can probably just let go and he'll thrive because it, you'll see how easy it is. But you got to kind of set him up for success. Yes. Th those are great tips. And, and to make – it's getting out of their comfort zone and to make it more comfortable and, and smooth sailing for them. They're going to utilize the healthcare system even more if it's easier that first time. I love the tip about the first appointment and last appointment. That is excellent. Well, the first appointment, both clinics, not the last appointment. If you're doing the last appointment, you're going to wait a couple hours. Oh, I thought you said first and last. Well, first, first or last. Uh, well, th there's usually two blocks. There's morning clinic, afternoon clinic. So the first appointment and morning or afternoon clinic. Oh, oh, that that's good. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. I was wondering, I'm like, do they, how do you know that you're going to be on time at a five o'clock appointment? Because But I'm always running on time. So if you're my patient, I will always be on time. So don't oh. worry about what appointment you get. <laughs> Look at that. I love it. Okay. Don't you worry. We heard it in the beginning. You have a staff that runs the office so smoothly. So yep. I don't doubt it at all. Well, Dr. B, it was so nice to have you on again. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, if our guests want to get a hold of you, really follow you because you have great tips and you're super relatable. Uh, what's the best way to follow you? So um, there's multiple avenues uh, depending on you know what platform you're on. On most social media platforms, I'm on Dr. Jamin B. So Dr. Jamin B. Uh, I have a website, jaminbrombot.com, or you can just Google Jamin Brombot and things will pop up. You'll see my profile at my hospital, the Orlando health page. You'll see reviews, et cetera. Um, but I'm also on LinkedIn. I'm huge on LinkedIn. So if you're like a professional and want to engage there, uh, you can just type my name, J-A-M-I-N, Brombot, B-R-A-H-M-B-H-T-T. I think I said that too wrong, but you can just look at the show notes uh, or the title and you'll see. But uh, uh, I've, I've become a big fan of LinkedIn um, and you can engage me there. The only thing is I can't answer your your medical questions yeah, um, that's true. I get people sending me pictures and things and then they get oh. mad. And, um, I, I, no questions. I, you know, social media it's... is exactly social media. It's not HIPAA compliant. You know, I'm if you want to engage us professionally uh, in a professional capacity, then, you know, we contact the office or I'll give you the number and then you just do it. Um, but uh, I'm not here to offer free advice when it comes to medical stuff, but I do give a lot of free life advice. Um, and then if you just fill in the blanks then you know, you can kind of figure out the rest. So 
So good. And I, I think that TikTok, that's what we should follow you on. You're growing my that. TikTok. No, my TikTok is is very amateur. Like oh. it's so bad. Uh, well, I'm, then that's it, why we should follow you. So then you got to kick up the game a little bit. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, it's like, uh, but it's so hard to stay on top of all these platforms. Mm-hmm. So it's it's like, you know, I try my best. But yeah, if you want to hit me up there, no problems. Shoot me Get a your like. Girls to help you. <laughs> They do listen. Whenever I post something with my family, like it's always like a major hit. Um, but uh, they're getting of the age where you know I don't even know if they want to hang out with me. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm with you there. I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, my daughter just just turning twelve, and just at the play the other day, she gave us this look like ooh, like painful that we were in the front row, like with our cameras. We're like, what? We're so cool still, aren't we? <laughs> Not at all. Um, well, Dr. Brombad, it was so nice to have you on. A pleasure. Thank you for joining us. And we will talk to you next time. Thank you, Patty. Have a good one. <laughs>